Hi students. So I'm going to start my watercolor on my hummingbird. I have drawn my hummingbird. I have my Sharpie. I've used a little bit of line quality, so some of my lines are a little thicker, <clears throat> excuse me, or thinner than others, but I basically have my bird and flower developed. The wet on wet technique for watercolor requires that the paper part of your project where you want the watercolor to ultimately B is already wet. It also is always helpful if you wet your watercolor a little bit before you start. Um, that's what I'm doing. I'm just putting a little bit of water in the container and then cleaning my brush a little bit and going back and adding another color. I've taken a look at some hummingbirds. I know I'd like mine to mostly be the blue, purple, green kind of iridescent hummingbird. So I'm going to show you with mostly those colors, how to do this technique. So for my bird, I'm going to start by wetting the paper carefully where I want to put some paint. I know that the paper isn't changing color, but I'm applying a little bit of water. The watercolor is going to move around inside where the paper is wet it's not going to bleed out into areas that are dry. It just doesn't have enough strength to do that. But it does move around areas that are wet. I'm going to do some more to this one. And then I'm going to drop in another color so you can kind of see how they move. So I want more purple in here. Now, I'm using my brush to sort of push and pull that color through the water. I don't have to really work too hard to get the watercolor to move, but I am cleaning my brush. I'm also tapping it onto a tissue. I'll move that so you can see it. Um, because I don't want an excessive amount of water here. And then if I put a little bit of blue in here, that will move through it as well. Now, let's say you're like, that's crazy. That's too much blue. In this particular case, I would actually agree with you. So what I'm doing now is I'm going in with a clean, relatively dry brush, and I can pull some of that color back up. It gets kind of sucked up into the brush and removed from my paper. Now, I do have to warn you, the more times you pass over a paper with a brush, when the paper is wet, the more compromised your paper is becoming. It's losing strength. It is, after all, still just paper. And it's going to eventually kind of come apart. So you want to minimize the amount of times that you pass over a certain area while it's wet. You can go to another part and work on that while that part dries. So the body of my bird I want it to be mostly blue with a little bit of green. This is a great blue for this. If your tray doesn't have such a vibrant blue. Whoops. Autumn Scott and Jemiah Sanders, please report to your bus immediately. Autumn Scott and Jemiah Sanders, please report to your bus immediately. Autumn and Jemiah, not cool. Now when I put a little bit of green in here, just like with the other colors, I can sort of move it around. That looks good. A little bit. And it will stay in the area that I have made wet. One of the beautiful things about watercolors is when they accidentally cross into each other's pool and contaminate each other. And I don't think you should try too hard to stop that from happening because it's part of the beauty of it. So I'm actually kind of encouraging it a little bit right there. So when you see this, I'll have completed it, but this is how I'm doing it. So you can do this on your own. Thank you. Bye.